Good evening and welcome. This is News First Prime Time News on TV One for the News First team, the voice of the people. I am Jaimal Ratnayaka, along with our sign language interpreter for tonight, Brian De Cruz. Today is the 5th of May 2021. Let's take a look at your headlines for this evening. Sri Lanka records more than 1,000 COVID-19 cases over the past week, including today. Talks underway to import AstraZeneca vaccines from Indonesia. Which VIPs received the COVID-19 jab at their homes? VIP, VIP, VIP. VIP. Rishad Badyuddin cannot attend parliamentary sittings under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Minister Sarat Virasekara says, no legal impediment for Badyuddin to attend parliament. Attorney General informs the CID. On to your top story for this evening. State Minister Sudashini Fernando Pulde has said that the Russian Sputnik V vaccine will be administered from tomorrow. The State Minister of COVID Disease Control noted that residents of Gotatur, where infections have spiked, will be among the first groups to receive the jab. In more COVID-related news, 1,897 COVID-19 cases have been identified thus far today, with 11 COVID-19-related fatalities being reported yesterday, according to the latest statistics issued by the Department of Government Information. 14,795 COVID-19 patients are currently under medical care. The total case load of COVID-19 in Sri Lanka currently stands at 116,849. While no deaths have been reported today, the death toll in the island stands at 720. 922 COVID-19 patients recovered today, raising the total recoveries in the island to 100,075. What are the areas under isolation? Several areas were placed under isolation from 6.30 a.m. today. In the Kalambu district, the Pamunua Gramanilidari Division in Maharagama, the Honnathara North and Honnathara South Gramanilidari Divisions in Piliandala, along with the Deltara West and Deltara East Gramanilidari Divisions, have been placed under isolation. The Kuttivila Gramanilidari Division in Kirindivela, located in the Gampaha district, is also on the list of isolated areas. The list also includes the Pallegama, Udagama and Newtown Gramanilidari Divisions in Ambilipitya that falls under the purview of the Ratnapura district. Further, the Valalgoda, Sudugala and Panamura Gramanilidari Divisions and the Ratkam Gramanilidari Division in Vevelvata were also placed under isolation from 6.30 a.m. today. In the Vaunya district, the Kurukkal Putukulam Gramanilidari Division is also under isolation at present. Will the COVID-19 strain spreading rapidly in India enter Sri Lanka. Reports have emerged of attempts to allow Australian cricketers, coaches and commentators to arrive in either Sri Lanka or the Maldives following the suspension of the 2021 Indian Premier League season. Australia has banned the entry of any person travelling from India until the 15th of May. 23 Australian cricketers took part in this year's IPL. Former Australian cricketer and Chennai Super Kings batting coach Mike Hussey has already tested positive for COVID-19. Foreign media reported 10 players, including foreign players who took part in the IPL, have already contracted the virus. Attempts of allowing those who attended the IPL to travel to Sri Lanka have emerged against a backdrop where a number of factions have raised concerns over an alleged process currently underway to allow travellers from India to engage in transit quarantine. A group of Indians were stationed at a hotel in Dambulla. Although the PCR test of all of them came out negative, when they left the hotel, 20 out of the 40 staff at the hotel tested positive for the virus. Were those Indian tourists COVID-19 patients? Did they all test negative? If so, how did so many of the staff members test positive for the virus? Didn't one or two Indians test positive? An extensive investigation must be carried out into this. Around 15, 20 or 25 aircraft from India arrive in the island daily. Indians undergo quarantine in Sri Lanka. If an Indian falls ill while undergoing quarantine, they too will have to be entered into our hospitals and be provided our ICU beds. Even the IPL held under strict travel bubble restrictions has been compromised. More than 40 Australian players are not being allowed to enter their own country. 
There are talks of them travelling to the Maldives. What sort of a situation would arise if those crowds come to Sri Lanka? Sri Lankan expatriates arrived in the country to ensure the victory of Gotabe Rajapaksa. But now they are stranded abroad, but COVID-19 infected Indians are being allowed to quarantine in the country. We need to address this issue and seek ways of resolving the issue. <laughs> The UK strain has further mutated in India. Fortunately, that strain has not been identified in Sri Lanka as of yet. We will take all necessary precautions to evade the strain from entering the country. I wish to inform the House now that no Indians are being quarantined in Sri Lanka. What is the situation on the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine? Sri Lanka requires approximately 600,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine manufactured in India under the brand name Covishield to be administered among those who receive the first dose of the jab. Will issues arise due to delays in administering the second dose, given the current situation in India? When the AstraZeneca vaccine was undergoing the third phase of testing, the first and second doses were administered in a space of two weeks. At that time, they realized that the efficacy of the vaccine stood at about 50%. However, when they were carrying out further studies, they found out that the efficacy increases to 80% when the first and second doses are administered within a space of 12 weeks. Therefore, when we approved the vaccine, we said that both doses must be administered between 12 weeks as the efficacy of the jab had increased. Upon completing tests into the vaccine, they found that the immunity offered against the virus lasts for about six months. The antibodies then began decreasing. However, they found out that the antibodies continued to provide protection from the virus. But this applies to the older variant of the virus. Tests have not been carried out to determine the immunity it provides against the new variant of the virus. But delaying the jab by 12, 14 or 16 weeks will not have a significant impact. Can a jab other than AstraZeneca be used as the second dose of the vaccine? They have mixed the AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccines to carry out tests. The preliminary data is to be received by the first week of July. Russia is mixing the AstraZeneca and Sputnik vaccine, but we haven't seen any data published on that. We don't know whether it will provide security against the virus. Revelations were made in Parliament stating that the government is holding discussions with Indonesia to import the AstraZeneca vaccine to the country. I wish to responsibly inform this House that we will vaccinate 60% of our population before the end of this year. At the same time, we will carry out our vaccination drive without any interruptions. From where will the vaccines be imported? I challenge you to point out the countries from which vaccines have been imported. The government has failed. I remember the opposition leader asking the government to formulate a plan in order to purchase the vaccines. However, they ignored that. Some ministers laughed at his remarks and said that vaccines are not required since there is a tonic. Ultimately, the president had to take the advice of the opposition leader. When we consider the extent of the funds looted through the antigen test kits, coconut oil and sugar imports, those funds can be used to vaccinate the entire population six times over. Why aren't they doing that? Why do we need a government that cannot import vaccines? If we had given the port terminal to India, they might have given us the vaccines. However, we must maintain our diplomatic and friendly ties with them. I wish to state that there is no point of maintaining relations with countries that are demanding portions of our landmass. We know that we are facing certain issues due to the situation in India. That is true. There is a shortage of 600,000 vaccines. As a government, we will take all possible measures to provide the second dose for 925,000 individuals who received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. We are holding discussions with Indonesia and other countries to import at least 600,000 more vaccines. We are expecting a favorable response from them. 
While a controversy has risen over COVID-19 vaccines, a batch of AstraZeneca vaccines is reported to have gone to waste in Batiklo. Uh, 570 doses of the vaccine which we received were not stored in cold storage facilities. It was stored in a freezer for more than 14 to 15 hours. The last reading on the temperature of these doses was about 10 degrees Celsius. This reading creates serious doubts as to whether these doses are suitable to be administered among the people. We took immediate measures to hand over these doses of the vaccine to the epidemiology unit to test its suitability. Until we receive a response from them, we cannot determine whether these doses will go to waste or not. Meanwhile, revelations were made on instances where the COVID-19 vaccine was administered to certain individuals based on special privileges. If the vaccine can be administered only on 650,000 people, on whose advice was it increased up to 950,000? This happened because the vaccine was administered to the associates of politicians on their instructions. I challenged the government to reveal the 950,000 people who received the vaccine. They have administered this vaccine to VVIP and VIPs. Even we parliamentarians fall under the VIP category. One of the public health inspectors in Kurnagala has administered the vaccine to a group of 20 people who are accompanied by the Kurnagala mayor. This is just one example. They have sidelined the individuals belonging to priority groups. <laughs> Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa today raised questions on the government's allocation of funds for the prevention of COVID-19 efforts. We have learned that attention has been paid to Kafir aircraft in light of national security. There is no issue in refurbishing or maintaining such aircraft. But we have learned that 50 million US dollars of public funds have been used to refurbish these aircraft. I wish to propose to the president to use his funds in taking measures to stem the spread of COVID-19 in the country. COVID-19 is not a good Meanwhile, questions were raised on the government's allocation of funds for the construction of a gymnasium. A good proposal was approved by the cabinet to allocate 650 million for the setting up of exercise centers, but in line of COVID-19, I propose that these funds be used to increase ICU beds, construct field hospitals, and to purchase oxygen cylinders ventilators and other medical supplies. I feel it would be apt to implement the two above-mentioned projects once the spread of the COVID-19 virus is brought under control. I wish to tell the opposition leader that these allocations have not been made using funds allocated for COVID-19 prevention efforts or from the COVID-19 fund. These cabinet papers were presented in line with the budgetary allocations. I wish to tell the president that our ministry will only undertake the procurement process we will not spend funds. However, I wish to inform you that the Treasury will disperse the required funds to curb the spread of COVID-19. We will not use these funds for any other purpose as well. Meanwhile, a team of officials from the Health Ministry inquired into the controversy that has arisen as a result of reversing the decision to place the Piliandala area under lockdown. Recently, Minister Gamini Lokuge said that the decision to place Piliandala under isolation had been reversed based on requests of the business community. Infections have not been reported from Piliandala. When we made a request to make a decision based on the data gathered by intelligence units, health officials held a discussion and lifted the isolation status in certain areas. The Traders Union has not exerted any form of influence towards health authorities and ministers. We haven't made a written or verbal request over this. As traders, we have no opportunity to exert pressure towards the health sector. We feel that the relevant action must be taken, considering the problems faced in the country. Apart from that, 
we have not made any request erenna api kisima deka me kisim prajawage illimak karala ne me piliyandala athi vicha siddhyath ekka dan peenawa considering the incident that occurred in piliyandala we can observe the decisions related to covid-19 are being made with political objectives they said that no covid-19 cases have been reported from piliyandala but there were cases even at that time now infections have been reported from piliyandala the piliyandala town and even the suburbs therefore what must be done now is that the politicians must set aside their stubborn qualities and allow the health officials to make the relevant decisions deshapana bala adhikarin tamange uddachakam pettakata dala e saukya bala adhikarinta avashya thindu thirna ganna avashya katayutu karanna ona in some grim news from neighboring india 3780 people have died of covid-19 in india over the past 24 hours the highest in a day so far pushing the total fatalities to 266 100 abiga pardon 266188 india's covid-19 case load hit 20.6 million with over 382000 new cases as the crisis continues to crush the healthcare system in the country The Indian High Commission of Sri Lanka has expressed its gratitude to the Sri Lankan people for their prayers on behalf of India which is grappling with a sudden surge in COVID-19 infections. Issuing a statement, the Indian High Commission observed that prayers and ceremonies have been held in different parts of Sri Lanka for the health and well-being of people of India. This included religious ceremonies such as chanting of the Ratna Sutra, special pujas and Sunday services at several religious places of worship across the country. The statement also observed that hashtags such as thinking of India, pray for India are trending on social media in Sri Lanka. The High Commission noted that President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa had expressed deep concern on the current situation in India. Accordingly, the High Commission expressed its sincere gratitude to the clergy and the people of Sri Lanka for their continuing prayers and well wishes. Welcome back to the news. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa attended parliamentary sittings earlier today. A group of lawmakers including Chief Government Whip Minister Johnston Fernando received the president in parliament today. This is the fifth occasion in which the president has attended parliamentary sittings since the inaugural session of the parliament. Numerous views were exchanged today on the failure to allow parliamentarian Richard Badiuddin to enter parliament. I request you to not allow any parliamentarian who has been detained under the provisions of the Prevention of Terrorism Act to attend parliamentary sittings until the investigations have concluded. Investigations are an integral part of national security. If details pertaining to those investigations are revealed in parliament, it might pave the way for individuals who are to be arrested to leave the country or brace for such a situation. සමහරට රටින් පැනයන්න පුළුවන් එහෙම නැත්තම් ඔවුන් ඒ ප්‍රශ්න වලට සූදානම් වෙන්න පුළුවන් මං කනගාටු වෙනවා ගරු කතානායකතුමා I express my regret over the fact that when we discussed it in the business committee neither you Dinesh Kunwadana nor any other member of the government raised these issues citing national security you might recall it was said that Rishad Badiuddin had come into contact with a covid-19 infected individual it wasn't clear to us as well Rishad Badiuddin must be allowed to attend parliamentary sittings it is his right the rights of parliamentarians must be protected kandawannata one eka obutuma etuma ge aithiya parliamentu mantri varunge aithiya araksha karannata one mata nila wasen dannala tiyenne i have been officially informed that there is only an issue due to covid-19 that is what i have learnt as there are two issues here let us conduct an extensive discussion and decide on that tiyena metane e gatlu deggena api meeta wada deerga saakachchawak karala api thinduwak ganna ee etuma ge paule aya His family members were informed that he cannot be brought to parliament without your approval. But during the party leaders meeting you raised some matter concerning COVID-19. Now the public security minister is mentioning the prevention of terrorism act. Three different matters are being raised here. Before a person is at least judicially pronounced to be a convict, he has never lost his seat in parliament. If what the honorable minister says is the rule then for 3 months somebody can be administratively detained on suspicion and lose his parliamentary seat that that cannot be the rule a wholly unprecedented thing will happen where any political opponent can be arrested and administratively detained even without being found guilty judicially right 
and and lose his parliamentary seat. They're bringing up laws that never existed and are using the Prevention of Terrorism Act to suppress the opposition. Don't allow that to happen. Your laws will not be useful if the CID arrests the public representative, detains him for three months and his seat is made vacant in that process. That is unjust. At 3 p.m. on Monday, a PCR test was conducted on Rishad Badiuddin. However, the results have not been published yet. What power does the minister have to make such statements? You need to issue a clarification in that regard. This is a serious statement. I am responsible for public security. Therefore, I request you to not allow him to enter parliament until the investigations end. CID officers do not arrest or detain people in an ad hoc manner. They are only arrested on justifiable grounds. We will not take action based on what you or Sarat Fonseca has said. The Presidential Commission report on the April 21st attacks has only recommended for the Bribery Commission to investigate Rishad Badiuddin. We will not oppose such a move. If he is connected to terrorism, file indictments and imprison him. The perpetrators of the attacks must be handed over death sentences. But the rights of a parliamentarian cannot be infringed based on a minister's whims and fancies. The speaker can allow a person to retain his parliamentary seat even after three months. Requesting for a main suspect to be allowed to enter parliamentary sittings will hamper the investigations. When he arrives in parliament, he will be able to make international and local telephone calls and explain matters relating to our investigations. The opposition is making such remarks while understanding that it will sabotage our investigations. Attorney General Dapula de Libera has informed the Criminal Investigations Department that there is no legal impediment in facilitating MP Richard Bathudin from attending parliamentary sessions. This was after the CID director had requested permission from the Attorney General on allowing Richard Bathudin, who has been detained, to attend parliamentary sittings on the 30th of April. A heated debate ensued once more in parliament today between Minister Sarat Virasekara and Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca. A few days ago, MP Sarat Fonseca made a statement betraying the nation and the army. He said that the release of war hero Sunil Ratnayaka and the others implicated in a Mirasuvil incident was wrong. We do not condone that statement. Do not disgrace your uniform by calling them war heroes. You cannot murder people. If someone is murdered, regardless of whether Sunil Ratnayaka you or Karan Nagar did it, he must be imprisoned. That is not a betrayal of the army. Do not try to act heroic here. If war crimes were committed, it can be justified. But no such thing has occurred. You are making such baseless statements to receive dollars. That is how you obtained 150 million rupees and 527,000 US dollars during the last presidential election. Everything I mentioned was included in the final court verdict. It was revealed by the judge bench at the Supreme Court. The reason you are saying it is because you have given in to the money of the Tamil diaspora. Did you object when 11,600 former LTT carders were rehabilitated? Did you object when 550 child soldiers were released? No. Lama Soldado Pansepana, Nidaskunas Vidudunas, eh? Tamunan Selaga, and Duma. 
Your government boasts of rehabilitating 12,000 former LTTE members. This man is saying they should have been killed. How did you manage to win all the districts with the majority of Tamils during the presidential election? I would like to state that you have a covert relationship with the Tamil diaspora and the LTTE. The minister breached Article 91 of the standing orders while speaking. I request you therefore to remove all those baseless allegations he made against Sarat Fonseca from the Hansard. I believe Sarat Fonseca had to face a suicide bomb because he was given dollars by the diaspora. Oh. There are people who are attempting to evade responsibility, claiming now for Maulavi is the mastermind. Handing over vital responsibilities to incapable people will only result in the implosion of your government. The reputation of the president will also be tainted. You speak of the attack, but what did you do before the attack? Therefore, you are the ones who should be held responsible for this. The Minister of Public Security is in this chamber as a coward. Sunil Ratnayaka and us were in the same battlefield, but we do not sympathize with murderers. Punishments were given for murderers, including the Manamperi murder, Amilipitiya murder, and several others. The Minister of Public Security claims he also performed in the war. He was in charge of the Civil Defence Force. He was not even part of the Security Council. He was crying to me when he was removed from the Navy asking me for a job. I then spoke to Gota Bay Rajapaksa and got him a job. He then cried to me saying the Navy commander has not assigned him a driver and security personnel. Those were also provided by the Army. That same man who has no sense of gratitude is making vilified statements against me by bowing down to dollars. I have no dollars in my pockets. The ones who crave dollars are the ones who travel to Geneva, party there and return. Tamil communities voted for the army commander because we engaged in the war while upholding humanitarian fundamentals. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa, who serves as the governor for Sri Lanka of the Asian Development Bank, was elected as chair of the Asian Development Bank Board of Governors for the year 2021-2022 during the 54th annual meeting, which was held virtually this afternoon. The annual meeting that was originally scheduled to be held in Georgia had to take place in a virtual format due to the current pandemic. During the meeting, the governors of Austria and Mongolia were also elected as vice chairs. I was. It is indeed a privilege to be able to participate and share my thoughts at the 54th annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank. This century is the Asian century. Our region has faced many crises, but Asia is also known for its resilience. Therefore, it is not surprising that our region is leading the growth story of the world, even during the current pandemic. At this time, let us also acknowledge the support extended by the ADB during the pandemic, which include a $20 billion package, the $9 billion Asian Pacific vaccine access facility, has also assisted Sri Lanka and many other countries to gain access to much needed va vaccines. And we are thankful to the ADB for this support. The challenges ahead of us are daunting. However, I'm certain that together we will be able to address these challenges efficiently and effectively, and that the ADB will provide the necessary leadership for that effort. 55th annual meeting of the ADB Board of Governors is scheduled to be held in Colombo next year. Several parts of the island have been affected due to adverse weather conditions over the past few days. Against such backdrop, residents of Malalpola in Yatiantota are currently experiencing hardships due to a recent landslide which occurred in the area. Residents of Malalpula in Yatianthutta narrowly escaped the jaws of death after a landslide occurred in the area recently. However, two tea estates were affected as a result of the landslide. We heard a large noise when the rocks started rolling down. We had to flee the area and seek shelter in another house. 
We spent the last few days in that house. Today we will have to move to another residence. That is because the conditions are dangerous. <laughs> Meanwhile, 17 individuals had to vacate their homes which were damaged during the landslide. These occupants have lost their livelihoods as well. Area residents attribute the landslide to the unorganized dumping of sand in the area. If it was a natural calamity, I would be able to bear it. But they have dumped large amounts of sand in the area. This is a crime. To whom can we pour out our grievances? We have informed about this to everyone possible. There are two differently abled individuals in my house. We have to carry them when seeking shelter. The assistant director of the Kegol district office of the disaster management center visited the area today to inquire into those affected by the landslide. Certain houses had been affected when it rained as a large mound of soil had been dumped in connection to a road development project. Three families were evacuated. We have provided the required relief. At the same time, we hope to hold discussions with the relevant authorities on how the road development project can take place without affecting the people. They had not obtained permission from the Grama Niladari office or the divisional secretary to dump that mound of sand. Fortunately, no lives were lost due to this. We took swift action and evacuated families that were at a danger of being affected. On to another story which has been trending over the past few weeks. Litro Gas Lanka Limited is yet to provide clarity on its new 18-litre gas cylinder which found itself in controversy in recent weeks. On the 27th of April, Litro Gas Lanka Limited announced it would provide information and clarity on its 18-litre gas cylinder within a week, after it was found to mislead the consumer. However, no such information has been made public as the deadline for the one-week period concluded yesterday. On the 20th of April, the Consumer Affairs Authority informed Litro Gas Lanka Limited to withdraw the 18-cylinder after detecting the new product is the existing 12.5 kilo regular gas cylinder with a reduced quantity of gas. Litrogas Lanka had committed offences under the Consumer Affairs Authority Act for erasing the labels of regular gas cylinders with reduced weight, falsely claiming that the new product contains a higher capacity. No action has been taken against these offences so far. Minister of Tourism Prasanna Ranatunga is set to hold talks with private sector tourism associations tomorrow. The meeting comes on the back of mounting objection against moves to introduce a new tourism act. Private sector associations have opposed the proposed tourism act, citing that they have been excluded from the Sri Lanka Tourism Authority that would be set up under the new legislation. The body is to be set up by amalgamating the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau and the Sri Lanka Convention Bureau. At this present, what we need is a financial relief, not to change the act. And also we need the vaccination for the tourism industry. Because we are talking about vaccine travelers to come to Sri Lanka, but the tourism industry is not vaccinated. The private sector has also raised concerns over the utilization of the Tourism Development Fund as they would be excluded from the decision-making process once the act is passed. The fund is financed by airport tax collections and 1% of the turnover of all establishments registered under the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority. According to the Tourism Act, the allocation of the fund are as follows. 70% to the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, 14% to the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, 12% to the Sri Lanka Institute of Tourism and Hotel Management, and 4% to the Sri Lanka Convention Bureau. The fund totaled around 3.5 billion rupees. The reason we em emphasize the importance of the private sector participation in the, in the tourism boards is because the management of these funds, which are actually brought in by the private sector, and that to ensure that there is no misuse and that the funds are used for the reasons that they have been collected, which is for marketing and promotion of the destination. 
Concerns have been raised on the future of valuable land areas that fall under the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority as well. Sri Lanka Tourism Authority has biggest valuable la land bank. They have properties in Kalpitiya, Bentota, Beruala and Pasikuda, Kalkuda. So these properties can be gone into, it can be converted into other private sector involvements if the current boards are changed after the new act. The former chairperson of the National Child Protection Authority, Marini de Oliveira, was awarded the Commonwealth's Points of Light Award. Marini de Oliveira received the 163rd Points of Light awarded by Her Majesty the Queen in recognition of her exceptional service in supporting victims of gender-based violence. The awards are made by Her Majesty the Queen as head of the Commonwealth to thank inspirational volunteers across all Commonwealth nations for the difference they make in their communities. The Commonwealth Points of Light Award was launched in April of 2018 to coincide with the UK hosting the Commonwealth's Head of Government meeting in London. And on that note, we wrap up tonight's edition of Primetime News on TV1. For the News First team, I am Jayama Ratnayaka, along with our sign language interpreter for tonight, Brian DeCruz. Take care, stay safe, and have yourself a good night.